From when you began riding to when you retired, did the aerodynamics of the sport change? Well, yes. I mean, the, the biggest thing that changed was in the late 80s, they invented a whole new type of handlebar. And the guy who invented this is a guy named Boone Lennon, and he was an old ski racer, but he also rode bikes. And he worked for Scott, the, the ski manufacturer, to make poles and skis. And he said, well, what if instead of, I mean, I wouldn't ski down the hill like this. What if, you know, a, a skier who's tucked like this, like, what if we rode like that? So and that, that, so that, that, just that everything. takes away the aerodynamic drag All this of my comes, arms outside. Yeah, everything inside. Everything and now inside I'm one body. thing. Yeah. So you look, it, it was called the Scott Bar, and it looked like a downhill ski racer. So that revolutionized the aerodynamics. But it's been interesting because the bike really hasn't changed. They don't want the bike I was going to get there. Tell me about this. Yeah, the bike, the, the traditional idea of a bike, which is sort of dictated by the governing body, is what they call a double triangle, right? So you have the, the rear triangle and the front triangle, and that makes up the classic shape of a bike. Okay. If you wanted to, you could obviously make a much faster bicycle if you got rid of the idea of the, the double triangle. A British guy in 1996 by the name of Chris Boardman set the hour record, which is on the track. I love the hour record. Which is like the ultimate I test. love that. I mean, you're indoors, there's no wind, there's no draft. It's like the ultimate. So and the track is banked, so you just... It's banked at 30. There's nothing degrees. against you. Right. So he said, he broke the hour record on a, a bike, it's called the Lotus bike. It was not a double triangle. You can look it up. To me, I think if the sport said, okay, get, you guys evolve technology-wise, do whatever you want, that's what the sport would look like. Lotus bike looked badass right there. So we got some examples of the evolution of the bike here. So Max, what do we have on, on our stage here? Well, we've got a penny farthing from uh, maybe the uh, replica of an 1860s bicycle. Pedals attached to the front wheel, so your speed is limited by the size of the front wheel. It's also dangerous, right? You fall off of this thing. You can fall off it, but if you start to lean one way or the other, because you're so high, you've actually got more time to correct it before you fall, to change the steering. Okay. But you will fall. <laughs> yes. So there's not only the bicycle, there's also, of course, as we discussed, the aerodynamics, okay? And so... How big an issue is the aerodynamics of bicycles? It's phenomenally important. When you're going... Oh, but only if you're going fast. No, no, no. If you're going slow, even if you're just going along at eight or nine miles an hour, half of your energy is being spent pushing the air aside. And so we have, we have a more traditional bicycle here, but I don't never think of bicycles themselves as aerodynamic. Oh, well, they, they've done lots of tweaks to make them more aerodynamic. That one there, I think, has got deep section rims, uh, which uh, allows the air to flow more smoothly. So it's not only that, there's drafting. Something we know about in NASCAR and, and other very fast races, but there's also drafting in cycling. It's crucial in cycling, in Tour de France. So uh, somebody in front of you, you can get an advantage from that. You certainly can. The energy that you need to expend, reduces that by maybe 